Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I've got a really quick one for you today because what I'm going to show you is the fastest possible method I can think of for painting Rebel Fleet Troopers from the Star Wars Legion game. Now this fella here, he is a 3D print from Darkfire Designs and I'll make sure that there's a link to the STLs for this fella in the description. Uh, but this will also work just fine on the plastic or the resin miniatures from the Legion boxed games. Now this isn't a gorgeous finish, but it's quick and it's easy. There is no edge highlighting, no fuss or anything like that. It is literally just contrast and a dry brush. So all of the paints for this will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now because this is going to be an extremely quick method, what I'm going to do is skip through this fairly quickly. Uh, all of the paints, as always, will be on screen and listed in the description, so don't feel as though you're going to miss out if you happen to miss me say something. I've started by priming this dude with White Scar. Any white primer will work here, but I do like the contrast primers for that nice smooth finish that they give. What I'd suggest is if you wanted a slightly nicer finish from this contrast method, actually use Gracia and instead paint a little bit of Wraithbone onto his skin for when we come to that. But I'm looking for the fastest possible method. So white scar it is, and you'll see why. So we'll begin by painting in his skin. For this, I'm going to use Gilman Flesh. Uh, when it comes to his face, you can go straight over the uh, strap on his helmet if you feel like it. The only thing I'd suggest trying to avoid is the little white chin strap over his chin. Now I'm going to use Snakebite Leather for his holster and his belt. Now this is going to be a little bit lighter than I think is truly screen accurate, uh, but I like how it looks. If you want a darker finish, then Garagax Sewer is a good idea. You'll see his big shiny buckle in the center here. I am actually going over that too, because we're going to hit that with a traditional acrylic later. That'll be fairly easy to cover. Now for his shirt, I'm going to use Space Wolves Grey. Now, when you first open this, you're going to see that there's a sort of glossy white sediment at the bottom. You need to shake it thoroughly to get that off and mix it into your contrast. Now, part of what makes contrast a very quick method of painting is that it's relatively simple, uh, but it can be a bit tricky when you're getting into small areas where you want your brush control to be very precise. I've missed a few bits, and I have splattered a few bits on his jacket. Now, ordinarily, I would leave any tidy up stages until I'm about to put the next color on. Uh, but just for the sake of argument, what I have here is some white scar. I'm just going to tidy up those little splashes just now. So you can see what I would do uh, between each step that I need to tidy. Now, with a little bit of apothecary white, I'm going to cover over his helmet. Now, the black section at the front here, you can go straight over the top of that as well. Do not worry about that. It's important with Apothecary White, try and keep your brush moving in the same direction as you apply it. You'll get a much smoother finish that way. Once that's dried, you'll see we get a nice blue shade to all of the recesses, but it does make the white a little bit blue. It's kind of what we're aiming for, though, but we can improve it here. What I've got is the white scar from earlier and just a small dry brush. What I'm going to do is work some of this off onto a bit of kitchen towel and then just lightly flick along the helmet a few times. I might need a little bit more paint on my brush actually. <laughs> but what we want to do is to lighten up the helmet again so that it's white on the smooth surfaces but leaves that shading intact so we get a little bit of volume to the helmet. Once that's dry, we've got a nice smooth white finish. Uh, if you do want to be a little bit quicker or you just don't like dry brushing very much, you can, with a steady hand, paint those panels in with some white scar from the pot, like you would with a traditional acrylic. It's up to you. What I'm going to use now is Black Legion. Now this, I'm going to paint all of the black details except his vest. Uh, reason being is I want to use a different black on his vest, but if you want to skip a paint, then just use Black Legion on all of the black details. You'll notice on his blaster too that I'm going all the way over the entire thing. The barrel and what have you is going to be a silvery color later. 
You'll see that actually covers very much like a regular black paint. Uh, black Legion is a super dark finish and it flows very smoothly, which actually makes it quite nice to apply. We'll go now to some Iron Hand Steel and I'm going to apply this to, funnily enough, the little metal parts. Just a quick coat of this on his blaster. Now the blasters do technically have another couple of little tiny uh, silver bits in them. I'm going to put those on off camera because it'll be easier for me. You can skip them if you'd fancy though. Really, the star of the show is the blaster barrel and his belt buckle too. As well, the Tent of Four has a silvery deck. Uh, so these bases from Darkfire Designs, I'm going to give them a quick coat of Iron Hand Steel as well. Now I'm using a nice flat brush for this. You'll see I do get a little bit of streaking still, so once this coat is dry, I'll come back and give it a second. Now make sure you give that plenty of time to dry, because we are going to apply some Basilicanum Grey in two places. First of all, we're going to go over his trousers, and as well his belt buckle too. You'll see it gives us a nice sort of smoky gunmetal effect. And the same as before, we'll grab that large flat brush and we'll apply a coat of Basilicanum Grey over the steel on the base. And then, once that's dry, what I've got is Black Templar. Now, like I mentioned, you can just stick to Black Legion for this, uh, but I like a little bit of variety between the, the vest and some of the other black gear that he's wearing. So I'm going to start by getting up under his arm. And you'll see straight away Black Templar has a slight sort of blue-black finish to it, which I quite like. So let's apply this over his vest. Now there, in a nutshell, is Contrast. Quick job, nice and simple, and it doesn't look too bad at all for the time that's gone into it. But we can go a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is take my little dry brush from earlier and some fresh Iron Hand Steel. What I'm going to do is just lightly dry brush across the top of the metal to give the decking a little bit of texture. Because I don't like, personally, I don't much like the, uh, the streakiness of the contrast over flat panels like that. So just with a little bit of fresh paint, we can brighten those up and still get some of that depth there. Now with a little black paint, I'm going to paint around the rim of the base. And now it's up to you if you want to go black. If you really want to, you could also do it white, or sort of an off-white beige like the Tent of Four, but I think that's going to take a lot longer. So I am going to stick with a nice solid black because I'm lazy. Now, I always quite like the point when you paint the base rim because then, to me, it always starts to feel a little more finished. What I have here is a big soft makeup brush, and these are super useful for dry brushing because it's difficult to apply too much pressure when you're dry brushing. What I'm using here is Othuan Grey, and if, if you're new to this sort of thing, it's not a dry paint, it is listed by Citadel as a layer paint. But, well, we used to dry brush with just about anything. I'm working most of this off into a bit of kitchen towel. You can even dry brush the back of your thumb <laughs> to get a feel for what you're going to leave behind. It's important that you're really just ghosting this miniature. Although well, in Grey is going to work over pretty much all of these colors that we have applied. So I'm going to very lightly, and I mean super, super lightly, pass over his coat, his shirt, and his trousers with just a little of this to pick out some of the detail in the extreme edges to make that contrast effect pop just a little more. Now that is a skill which will take a little bit of practice, uh, but it's totally worth it. I quite like the high contrast finish that you get. His jacket doesn't look truly black anymore, but that will dull down and look a little bit more sensible once we put a varnish on. You'll see I have ended up going over his boots a little bit as I was dry brushing his trousers, but a little bit of black paint, same as we used for the uh, base, will tidy that up just fine. Now at this point, if you want to dull down his jacket a little bit, because I can understand finding that a bit too high contrast, I like it, but not everybody's going to. So now that you've seen what this looks like, what I'll show you, with some Nong oil, go over the vest again, and what it'll do is bring some of that shading back, dull down a little bit of the blue tint from the Othone Grey, 
and generally just look really cool. Uh, it's also a super easy step to do, so go nuts with it. It's real quick. Now once that's dried, you'll see it knocks back that blue tint quite a bit, and now that jacket looks more black again. Which is brilliant, because it's so simple. So what I'm going to do now is to take him outside and hit him with a matte varnish spray. It's always a good idea, in fact it is necessary, using contrast or anything like it, to varnish your miniatures once it's finished. So let's get a look at what that looks like, and it's all brought together when he's done. And there at last, our Rebel Fleet Trooper is complete. Now throughout this little guide, I've shown you a couple of steps at which you could stop. And I think, with a little bit of extra work, you do get something which you can be pretty happy with on the table. But even if you are looking to get something done very quickly, I think having those extra stages gives you some examples of where and when you can decide whether or not you want to keep going. Uh, honestly, I kind of like the idea of just knocking them out as fast as possible. But even something as simple as that final null oil on the jacket really does a lot for the look of the miniature. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and resin, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Andrew, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and may the Force be with you.